Throughout its lengthy run, The Walking Dead was never a show afraid to kill off characters. But while this was sometimes its biggest draw and led to some of the most dramatic moments, there were other times where its death felt like nothing more than a missed opportunity. And with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and this is The Walking Dead 10 Characters Who Died at the Wrong Time. Number 10, Noah. Season 5, I think we can all agree, and if you don't, let me know down in the comments, was an excellent year for The Walking Dead. And that's even more impressive considering just how many deaths it featured that didn't quite feel as impactful as they could have. We'll get back to that thought later on, but for now we need to talk about Noah, one of the standout characters of the admittedly wonky hospital arc in that fifth season. Initially an unlikely companion for Beth Green, Noah was shockingly able to outlast Beth and join up with Rick and the rest of the survivors. That integration was a success as well, and proved that he did have a lot of potential to become an important recurring character, both in terms of how his abilities could benefit the larger Alexandria community, as well as his own personal storyline as an original character created for the show, to the point where he genuinely could have rivaled series mainstays. It also helped that actor Tyler James Williams was just so damn endearing and likeable in the role. You just didn't want to see anything bad happen to him, kind of like early season Glenn. Perhaps because of that reason though, Noah didn't make it out of season 5 alive, receiving one of the show's most iconic and goriest deaths. Now, the death scene itself is absolutely spectacular, don't get me wrong, but it's hard not to imagine it being even more impactful and devastating coming even a season later, rather than just a little while after he eventually joined the main group. Noah had a lot left to offer as a character, and although his death did further the storyline line between Glenn and Nicholas, 11 episodes for him just felt way too short. Number 9, Pope. Now this one was infuriating. The first villain of the show's final season, Pope was a bloodthirsty, god-fearing military man who had formed something of a cult with his fellow soldiers, and had menacingly taken Daryl as one of his own. Now Daryl was of course too smart to align himself with Pope, but he was great undercover, tricking the madman into thinking they were together, only to then work behind the scenes to save his friends. However, it's teased overtly and repeatedly that Pope is onto Daryl's double agent shtick, and the two battle-hardened fighters seemed destined to come to blows at some point. Only, it never actually happens. Before it can, Pope's killed by his right hand, Leah, and that's that. Looking back, it's also kind of hilarious how often Pope mentions wanting to face off with his so-called nemesis, Maggie, only for the two characters to literally never meet on screen. In fact, it's never even made clear if Maggie knew who the hell this guy was, or if she was just terrified of the threat that his men posed. Ultimately, what else is there to say other than what a mess. He was a cartoon villain, of course he was, but they didn't even pay that off satisfyingly. Number 8, Rosita Espinosa. Rosita Espinosa was one of The Walking Dead's most prolific characters, surpassed, if you'll believe it, by only Rick, Daryl, Carol, and Maggie in terms of appearances, which is just kind of baffling considering how thin and inconsequential she was throughout the show. Though actress Christian Serratos does a commendable job of selling Rosita as the tough, unwavering fighter that she was, that was about all the actress was given to work with. And even when she was given something a little bit deeper in terms of the script, like a relationship with Gabe, Gabriel, or a child whose father she was forced to kill, it just fell a bit flat. Despite this though, Rosita managed to make it to the very last episode of The Walking Dead, and was in fact its final major death, an odd distinction given how rushed it was and how truly forgettable she was as a character. Again, I need to note this is absolutely to not knock Ceratos' performance. I mean, the reason the character lasted so long anyway was absolutely no doubt because of her ability to elevate the material, but we do live in a world where Carl Grimes was killed by a lone walker off screen, but Rosita fought to the end without any major personality traits to speak of. Madness. Number 7, Tyrese Williams. Oh, Tyrese, you gentle giant. There were a lot of characters naturally unprepared for the end of the world, but none more so than Tyrese, who spent his entire three-season run on The Walking Dead driven mad by the cruelty that surrounded him. Whilst this was often compelling, especially in the first act of season five, when he was forced to act as baby Judith's guardian angel, it was also quite repetitive in its nature, with his rage and disillusionment being a little bit one-note and almost boring at times. That being said, when he did finally 
finally bite the dust, drifting off after a couple of walkers left him hallucinating his peaceful trip to the great beyond, he'd only just started to find himself and come to terms with his grief. This seemed to promise a brighter future for the big hearted hero, one in which he was made stronger by his trials and tribulations, but it never came to pass. He died before this new chapter could begin and his future was forever lost. Now, not only is this a shame in terms of the show's potential, but it's compounded by just how far away Sho Tyrese was from his comic counterpart, who was beloved and iconic in every single way. And this only made it worse when, just as it looked like the writers could start bridging that gap, he was killed off. Number six, Paul Jesus Rovia. To his credit, like so many other people on this list, actor Tom Payne was fantastic as Jesus, the pacifistic, hopeful hilltop leader whose calm moral resolve made for a welcome breath of fresh air from the more brutally minded of his friends. It's just that, and we really can't blame him here, but Payne was never really giving anything of note to work with. Jesus' role was cut dramatically from what it was in the source material, and his potentially lovely relationships with Aaron, Maggie, Tara, and Dan never took off as they could have. Having himself asked to leave the show, Pain was written out of the series during the season 9 mid-season finale, killed suddenly by a lone whisperer. Despite being the show's best fighter, which I guess was to show how much of a threat the new villains were, and then he was quickly forgotten. Given Pain's performance and Jesus' potential as a community leader and love interest in a show with painfully little romance, may I add, his demise just felt a little bit cruel. If only they'd given Pain the character he deserved he'd have definitely been around to the end and been one of the strongest of the cast. Number 5. Andrea Harrison as far as Walking Dead characters go, few are as universally reviled as Andrea, a strong but broken member of Rick Grimes' original Atlanta group who eventually became the show's female lead. In those first two seasons of the show, Andrea wasn't particularly endearing or even well-written, with her grief over her sister's death, her animosity towards her surrogate father Dale, and her repetitive desire to have a gun in her hands being a cause of much-discussed audience derision. But to note these flaws is to also note just how strong a character she was becoming just before she died. In one of the show's most infuriatingly dumb death scenes may I add, with her love for the villainous governor and hope to reconnect with her old friends, allowing her to become quite the entertaining figure. Despite this otherwise welcome character development though, and ignoring the fact that Andrea actually makes it to almost the comics' end as Rick's wife, she was killed off screen and rarely spoken of again, her growing potential forever squandered. Number 4, Merle Dixon. The older brother of Daryl, Merle, was a mean piece of work who was also one of The Walking Dead's most entertaining and complex characters during its first three seasons. Made a main player in the third season and reunited with his estranged sibling, Merle was a character caught in something of a crossroads. At once a bitter, broken man set in his ways, and someone who may have been able to use the apocalypse as an opportunity to become better. And just as it seemed as though he was on his path to a redemption that he might survive, though, proving his loyalty to Rick after all of their clashes and making peace with Daryl, the writers decided to give Merle a suicide mission in which he tried to kill the governor. Killed brutally and left as a walker for his brother to find, Merle was only just starting to become something more than the racist bastard that everyone initially hated. And in another world, he'd have fought with the main group for another season or two, but Michael Rooker, God bless him, wasn't meant to stick around on the show. Number 3, Leah Shaw. Leah Shaw introduced in the back end of The Walking Dead's 10th season, never really came together as a character, and to be totally honest, she probably died right when she needed to in terms of pure timing. The problem here then is that whilst the timing itself was acceptable, the way and why of it was seriously anticlimactic and kind of emotionless, given the fact that she was killed by her former lover Daryl without ever even realising that he was the one to do the deed. At once a briefly stirring love interest and a ferocious villain who wanted to to blindly protect her family of sadistic ex-soldiers, Leah's character was just all over the place, bordering on the irritating in her inconsistencies, but surely we could have seen her and Daryl square off one last time before the end, it's just crazy that didn't properly happen. Thrown in in a half-baked way to add some depth to Daryl's long empty love life, and then reimagined as an antagonist with unexplored motivations, Leah was a massive waste of potential whose death should have at least been more heartbreaking and built up for her old pal. Number 2, Beth Green. 
Of all the characters in The Walking Dead, Beth Green was always the most unfairly maligned. A depressed, struggling teenager who seemed destined to die, only to then become stronger and braver with every twist of fate she endured. Sure, she was a touch underwhelming in season two, though remember, she was literally a young, sheltered teenager trying to deal with the end of the world and the loss of her family members, which, you know, pretty tough. But when given the time to bond with Daryl Dixon after the loss of her father and home, the younger Green sibling was showing clear exciting signs of becoming something really special, like Carol or Sister Maggie, a predictable victim turned fearless survivor. But no, instead of acting on this development, The Walking Dead employed its most nonsensical death scene in the whole show, killing Beth with an accidental bullet to the head just as she was about to reunite with her friends and family. That we spent so much time watching her finally become a compelling force, only for her to die so cruelly and pointlessly at the very last second, makes Beth Green's death all the more ill-timed because she had so much better to offer and this was just pointless. Barely anyone brings it up. Number one, Carl Grimes. Who else could it be? Come on, guys. With the death of Carl Grimes, so died The Walking Dead as audiences knew it. Of every character in the show, Carl and later Judith seemed the only ones sure to survive at all. The son of a protective Rick Grimes, destined to lead the new world and defeat the old. That's what happens in the comics anyway, and the show seemed to be leaning that way too for much of its run. For all of its melodrama, after all, The Walking Dead's one emotional constant was Rick's desire to protect his family and give them a real future. Worse still, is the fact that Carl himself was actually a compelling character in his own right. A scrappy born leader who, by his season 8 death, was growing into quite the man. An endearing reflection of his father's best intentions. In the end though, Carl Grimes wasn't meant to have the future that the show seemed to be hinting at. After everything he'd been through, he was just bitten by a random walker and then died in a sewer. Yeah, it wasn't even a good death and it wasn't even on screen, nor did it get much of a reaction from anyone other than Rick and Michelle. And truthfully, I think what makes this more annoying is that you could say that yeah, Chandler Riggs was aging out of the role, but the show itself would quickly implement a huge time skip anyway. And the idea of Riggs playing a grown-up Carl, especially in the absence of his father when Andrew Lincoln left the show, is a massive missed opportunity. This guy should have been right there at the very end, and it's not just because he outlives his father in the comics. 